yeah friends, I know that the title is crazy because Bloomtown literally just got released or will be in a couple of hours, but I had the privilege to play it before the official release and let me just tell you that I might have played it non-stop, the game is just that good. So here's some tips that I think you should know about Bloomtown beforehand or in the early game. We'll be discussing everything from combat to relationships, though this video contains a lot of spoilers of course, so if you just want to play this going in blind, then please turn back now. It's okay, I understand. Anyways, for everyone that stayed, let's get right to it. Number 1. Making the most of it In this game, decisions could cost you money and also potential earnings. That's because we have to take chances and roll the dice. This means if you fail your rules, you'd have a very slightly different route or worse, fail your side quest. And I don't want that to happen to you unless you're masochistic or apathetic about it. So in order to avoid that from happening, what you want to do is to raise your charm first. And also one point on smarts should be enough. This is because the earliest roles in games are charm roles, which then helps you gain experience on other stats. Charm basically carries us in the first one hour of the game, because successful roles on this will give you free money and items. And you gotta know that leveling your charm also levels your smarts along the way. Oh, and by the way, if you want to reduce something because you fail a role or an answer, then you have the option to um, sort of cheat by reloading your save. Moving on. Number 2. Leveling your personality stats Now here's a bigger reason why charm is so important in the early game. Other than getting free cash and items, charm is like the hardest stat to level because it can only be leveled through conversations in the early game. Oh, but you can also level your charm by watering Ramona's flowers. Smarts, on the other hand, can also be leveled through charm rolls, but the easier method is just by reading books or answering crossword puzzles. For proficiency, this one is so easy to max out, you can do it without even trying. You can gain proficiency from crafting, cooking, and farming. And the fastest way to level this is by fishing and then cooking the fish that you just caught. That's pretty much it. And don't worry about guts because it can be leveled on the second half of the game at Joe's shooting range. Number 3. Better Equipment While treasure chest gives a lot of nice equipment and the pawn shop sells a few good ones for a decent price, I personally like buying from the TV shop. Once a week, you can buy from this shop by interacting with the TV when it's on and it will give you a list of 3 items which you can only choose one from. And if you keep waiting until the last item, you will lose your chance to buy it all. And also no turnbacks. Of course, unless you reload your game and do it over again. But if you do that, the list of items for sale will also be randomized. I personally like to buy accessories in here in the early game though. And if you don't have enough money, don't worry because you can still go out and work at Mr. Lovely's or sell some stuffs at the pawn shop because the TV shop is available for a whole day. Number 4. Hangouts Earlier, we talked about personality stats, but what about anything that concerns combat? There are two things for combat that you should be improving, and one of them is by unlocking passive traits. And believe me, this will save your bum a couple of times. So what you want to do is to hang out with your friends once a day. Hugo can only be invited at home, Chester can be invited by knocking at his room's door, Ramona would be at her house, and Ruth at her shop. This is basically just a side story cutscene where we get to know more about these children. The great thing about this is that after each cutscene, we would unlock their individual passive trait. So don't forget to hang out with your friends. Number 5. Subdue. Now another way to increase your combat stats other than by leveling up is actually by equipping demons. Yep, I know that sounds wrong, but you heard me correctly. You can actually capture demons by subduing them in which all demons should be downed. It's a bit difficult to do this when there are multiple demons since they have different weaknesses. So just isolate the one that you want to catch and make sure to use an elemental attack that they are weak against. You would want to capture as much demons as you can in order to fuse them and level your main demons because equipping Keeping demons will reflect their stats to yours and you can even use their skills too. Number 6. Combat Strategy now that you know how to increase your stats, it's time to make a heckin' OP strategy. Unlike other turn-based games where speed matters, Bloomtown actually has a set order of who will attack in order. This is very important to take note of to polish your combo. The order is pretty much Emily is always first, and then Ramona, Chester, Yego, and then the enemies. So personally, I like to put all the ailments, buffs, and heavy melee on Emily, buffs and debuffs on Ramona, and buffs and ailments on Chester, while Yego does all of the elemental damage. This way, there will be ailments and mobs which double some elemental damage plus complete buffs on Yugo which just kinda instantly kill enemies. Number 7. 
time management. Time in Bloomtown isn't too fast, but doing activities will surely eat your time away. So some of y'all might get stressed on when you should go back to the underside. But hey, did you know that it's best to go there on evenings? The underside is open 24-7 through your telephone, and coming back from it always ends at 9.30 p.m. Whether you went there at 9 a.m. or 9 p.m., you're still coming back on 9.30 in the evening, regardless of whether you stayed on the underside for 5 minutes or 5 hours, which means that the best time to go to the underside is when you're all done with all of your tasks for the day. So you can just take your time to work at Mr. Lovely's, explore, hang out with friends, watch a movie, exercise, read a book, and even craft. And then go to the underside, and when you get back, you'd still have 30 minutes to cook, craft, or even read a book. Number 8. Free items and money Now here's some of the free items and money that you should get as soon as possible because some side quests are only available when you're at the scene. During your first date, one of the main quests would be to gather dandelions, and there would be a side quest there where random kids will ask you for help. Of course, what you want to do is ask them for money, in which you would be doing a charm roll. You wouldn't want to go to the treehouse until you've talked to all of the children scattered at the map as they will give you side quests again. At the middle of the map, there's also a bunch of apples that you can pick up, and it's a good idea to pick them all up since apples heals you in battle. You might also want to turn them into apple jam at your kitchen. After that, you'd be good to continue on with your main quest. The next freebie that you would want would be the free candies at the candy shop. You can take up to 3 candies every day and this restores your SP in battle. And don't forget to raise your personality stats before you do the telephone pranks as you'd really want to get those side quests for a free sword and a free book. And speaking of the phone, don't forget to call mom so that grandpa would give you extra cash. Again, raise your charm as much as you can for more chances of moolah from grandpa. And overall, just be a nice kid. You get free stuff that way, for real. Number 9. Food In terms of farming and cooking, I usually just cook vegetable stew and licorice candy. The stew restores 70% HP while the candy restores full SP. And honestly, all you need for those dishes are tomato and cabbage for the stew and sugar cane and licorice for the candy. You'll be needing more SP regeneration food compared to HP ones, so don't forget to buy seeds at the plant house as soon as possible. The best part about Bloomtown farming though is that you can get the seeds back for every harvest, so that means that you wouldn't need to buy a lot of seeds or go back and forth to the plant house as long as you take care of your crops every day. So the best way to do this is to buy 2 tomato seeds, 2 cabbage seeds, 9 sugar cane seeds, and 3 licorice seeds. And don't forget to water them every day or else they will die and you won't get anything. Well, but that's about it folks. I really hope that you would like Bloomtown as much as I did. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more Bloomtown guides coming your way. Thank you again to my lovely channel members as always. And I will see you all next week. Bye bye!